Welcome back guys. Uh, what we're going to do is kind of walk through um, the final items of the conversion. So uh, hooking up the fuel lines, uh, the charcoal canister, um, the radiator hoses, exhaust intake, uh, the belt, um, the throttle, um, the brake line that we that for the brake booster that we had cut earlier. Here we have the throttle body, the throttle body reverser, and two gaskets. So we're going to get this, um, the throttle body attached to the uh, throttle body reverser, or TBR, and then that's going to uh, connect to the engine. The first items is the air duct. Uh, this is the stock air duct for from the Subaru Legacy. and. Uh, it connects uh, using these um, on this end this is going to be uh, toward the mass airflow sensor side and then it goes over here to the um, to the throttle body side so if we were looking at it in the van it would actually connect up kind of like kind of like that so at a slight angle uh, right here and then um, all the connections for the uh, breather hoses and so forth go right there and then the um, IAC valve connection goes right there and then this con connects to the uh, the mass airflow sensor so um, if we come up here you can see that the mass airflow is actually mounted to a cone filter and uh, if we look at the stock Subaru box, which, um, you know, it'd be great to use this just because it keeps everything stock, but, um, you know, I found that the cone filters work pretty well. One thing you have to do is take the actual uh, uh, screw in adapter off. You have to drill out these two rivets, and that allows you to pull this metal, it's kind of this gold. Uh, piece out and it has a ring around it that the uh, that the cone filter is able to clamp to and then you can just uh, screw your uh, mass airflow sensor right into it now we're ready to go over some of the items uh, talked about earlier uh, let's take a look at the intake ducting first off if we come in here we see that the stock intake tube can be used and it tucks kind of nicely back behind um, the engine let's uh, let's get underneath here and I'll show you so you can see that it's uh, kind of tucked right behind the uh, left valve cover now it is pretty close to the axle boot on the left side so I'm thinking I'll probably make some sort of shield just so grease doesn't get kicked up onto it. But uh, it should get slightly cooler air down here. However, you may need to wash it more frequently. Here's a view of the top of the intake uh, ducting. Um, I took a heat gun and slightly uh, melted the plastic here to turn the IAC valves uh, connection so that it meets up with the IAC valve down here um, a little better normally it comes like straight out here and I did the same with one of the vacuum hoses here for the breather uh, the valve cover breathers and so uh, this one I left stock and I cut off a little bracket here just because it was kind of in the way. Okay, so all the bre breather connections then need to take place. I have a little T down here and um, also from the crankcase breather to the PCV valve. Now, what we have here is the throttle body along with the throttle body reverser right here. Um, we've got the coolant lines that connect up to it. Here's a shot of the fuel filter mounted to the uh, firewall here. We have the inlet that comes from the fuel pump that's mounted just below kind of on the frame member 
and uh, the output then goes to this connection on the engine. Then we have the return line right here, which then loops back and goes to the uh, bottom of the fuel tank. Now on some of the older model buses, you pre-fuel injection, uh, you need to actually create a, a uh, return inlet so a lot of people do them on the the filler tank I've seen that and uh, what I did on the 73 was actually use one of the vent lines so if we take a look down here this line actually is for the vent and it's just gonna go to the charcoal canister and we'll take a closer look at that um, here in a second. While I'm here, I want to take a look at the igniter that I've mounted right here, the engine connectors, which it's kind of hard to see, but they're kind of tucked down here. It might be better from a different angle. Then we have the knock sensor, and, uh, the crank and cam sensor mounted here, the connectors for them. And then this wire loom then goes to the mass airflow sensor tucked down here and the O2 sensor. The brake booster line that I had talked about earlier is actually uh, right here and it just goes to the uh, barb fitting that we had moved on the intake. It's, uh, the barb actually usually sits right here on this side. Um, taking one of them out Put it over here just for ease of connecting up the brake booster line and then use that plug that was on the other side into this one then we come to the subject of the um, throttle cable now in this case uh, the throttle body is oriented uh, similarly um, so if you just took this throttle body and flipped it over it would sit normally so in every bus that I've seen the throttle cable is always different so it's kind of up to your own ingenuity to kind of figure out a solution in this case if we look down here my throttle cable ended about right here with a like a two inch lead on it so I actually bent a piece of tubing to go up here and then interface with the stock Subaru um, cable and I spliced those two together using a um, like a cramp connector and then uh, and then now we have adjustability using this stock bracket and the angle is actually pretty decent on this so um, basically it's it's ready to go now I did do some modification to this bracket. I bent this um, upward because normally it kind of sits more at an angle like that and now it's kind of like that. So that that helped but uh, that might be up to kind of your own ingenuity on what you find is installed in your bus. Here's another view of the uh, throttle body reverser and the uh, throttle assembly and we can come back here and kind of see that the engine connectors um, come with this little bracket here on the 90 to 94 legacies. So I just used one of the mounting ports on this uh, radiator to uh, screw that into. Okay, so next item, let's take a look at the belt here. We have just a uh, uh, I think it's 17 inch, but I'm gonna post a uh, a part number on the on the description. I mentioned the line that was going uh, from this port here being part of the charcoal canister. Let's trace that out. So it will actually come up here, kind of swings to the top of the radiator, and it actually goes to the vent line, which I had tucked. Uh, just behind the radiator right here 
And then let's take a look at the charcoal canister itself. It's mounted to the frame right here using its own bracket kind of tucked back here you can kind of see that and it goes from one other you know this is the other vent hose for, to the gas tank uh, it's a steel hose so you have to bend and cut it to your needs and uh, this charcoal canister has two connections on it one of them goes here which you know leads through the intake assembly over to here which we were earlier and then it has a smaller diameter hose that actually goes to a valve tucked back under here and that's just to, to uh, for emissions now we're going to talk about our radiator hoses once again I'll post part numbers in the description and we have this guy here which goes to our left hand radiator and it cools everything down and then shoots coolant through this crossover pipe over to this side and then it cools this direction and then comes down and we go to the thermostat. Now what we're gonna do is take a little closer look at the radiator fill cap. This is a uh, Moroso part with a 13 pound radiator cap on it and it also has a um, overflow nipple here and we just need to mount an overflow canister somewhere. So the overflow canister will most likely sit kind of tucked on the firewall right here very near the uh, fill pipe. That way we can uh, add fluid as needed from the top cover. And finally we have exhaust. So this is just a KEP exhaust header and this is a Ford F-150 uh, 1996 six cylinder uh, muffler. It's a good replacement for a Vanagon so I just continue to use it on these swaps. And um, what I like about the KEP unit is that it has an uh, oxygen sensor bone right there and it also has a slip joint right here. Now this allows you to take the right side, so this side over here, exhaust uh, off and gives you great access to the port here to drain your transmission fluid. I really like that. Uh, it's really simple and elegant, I think. I think it's a pretty, pretty good system. So the exhaust is installed right now. Um, however, there, I'm waiting on a part that actually will connect this side of the exhaust to the engine. Um, just a physical connection so that uh, not all of the weight is coming off of this uh, connection here so that you know it's it's a little more sturdy right now I mean it's pretty good right now but over time that's that's gonna cause some damage so just waiting on a part for that now some of you more observant folks uh, probably have seen that I don't have an engine carrier yet so here's an engine mount here and uh, you know it it will mount up to the frame uh, however I've, I've just been waiting on getting that uh, finalized over at the machine shop. So it's gone through a number of revisions, but uh, I think ultimately it's going to be a very, very elegant, simple solution consisting of a crossbar similar to the one that I have on the 73, but uh, version number two. So it's going to be a little easier to install and simple. So I wanted to um, make it clear that the engine is located vertically and held into place by the transmission cross member on the buses. Um, you don't want to put a lot of stress on that, hence the engine carrier. But all the engine carrier does is take a load off of those, those two bolts. So it, uh, it doesn't locate the engine as in a Vanagon. The, uh, the cross member actually locates where the engine is going to rest. In this, um, it's the those two bolts in the transmission cross member that locate the engine. 
and then the uh, the cross member will actually take some of the load off of those two bolts and also um, provide a little bit of torsional stability. In the next video I'll go through starting the engine for the first time and any troubleshooting associated with that. We'll connect up the uh, green diagnostic um, connectors and we'll actually go through using the B10 scan tool and uh, and take a look at how to kind of use that software and see how the engine is performing.